Hello, welcome to the Pin Man. Today I'm sitting out here on my porch and we have a little bit of light rain and there was some low rumbling thunder a little bit ago, which I really enjoy. Uh, wife and I had breakfast out here. It's just a, just a wonderful, relaxing day. So today we are going to talk about something else that gives uh, me times of relaxing. That is writing and using and playing with my fountain pens. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a pen that uh, you might not find or you might not think to look for uh, online but maybe you would see it in a office supply store and that uh, office supply stores are one of my favorite kinds of stores. I love uh, hardware stores and bookstores. Oh yeah, I really love bookstores. But office supply stores are really cool. I don't know if it's just because of so many uh, organizational type of aspects, uh, paper products, and, and of course pens, writing utensils of various types. But I've often seen in their pen section, they, they will have some fountain pens. And a lot of times, at least the ones I've looked at at Office Depot, Staples, they would have some offerings from the Cross Pen Company. And so I've been kind of curious of what quality those pens are. Well, uh, I got a particular deal. It wasn't at one of these stores, but it was from, from an on online retailer, Pen Boutique, as a matter of fact. And uh, this is the Cross Adventure. And so uh, we're going to be taking a look at this uh, this pen. It was about twenty dollars, and uh, I was pleasantly surprised uh, for what I got uh, for the money. And so, uh, without further ado, let's head on over and take a look at this nice little pen. Alrighty, first off, uh, the Cross Adventure comes in this um, kind of retail style uh, packaging where you put it on the hooks and I'm sure many of you it looks very familiar there's the lion's head that's on the nib as well um, and then it's just uh, let's see a fountain pen and on the back it gives some instructions as far as uh, the ink cartridges and kind of bottle ink so if you're looking at ink cartridges you want to make sure that you get one of these styles at least compatible uh, to those numbers because they are proprietary um, let's see and then down here it talks about it is the starry blue so but yeah it's just a basic retail packaging so we'll put that away and then here we have the pen it is a again they call it starry blue but I wouldn't necessarily call it starry in that it doesn't um, doesn't have any kind of glitter you would think if it was starry it would uh, have some sort of glitter uh, or metallic I, I would say metallic uh, look to it but um, you know it's it's okay it's just a like a dark I would call it a dark slate blue maybe but may, maybe they're talking about night sky uh, I think night or late evening <laughs> I don't know okay starry blue let's go with that and then on the uh, the cap finial we'll go ahead and start there it um, starts at the Tip there, tapers down just a little bit, and it's just rounded on the uh, on the end. The clip uh, has a little cutout on the around the middle, and then it just says cross right there. Let's see. Some let me point this out too. I, I thought this was interesting. Uh, cross is a uh, USA, yet uh, as you can guess, it's made in China. All right, American company, uh, but stuff made in China. Okay, so we move down. the The shape is is interesting. It's different than a lot of 
uh, you know, some other pins in that as the cap uh, comes, meets uh, with the body there, it's really, it's uh, distinctly uh, bigger than the uh, than the the body of the pin, but not too bad. The shape is uh, reminds me of another pin. If you can think of another pin that has a very similar shape, maybe you are thinking of the Waterman Karen. Oops. If you look at that, either. <laughs> You can either, depending on how you want to look at this, but uh, if you turn the, uh, I guess if you want to turn the finial or the uh, cap finial, let me uh, put that upside down there. It can be very similar to the Waterman Karen. I don't know, just kind of an interesting uh, observation there, but I, I, I think this was intended to... Um, go this way all right the as we're talking about the body finial it comes up it's got this little slice on the end it's just plain there's no uh, uh, images or whatnot this band here is noticeable it's not sharp but it is noticeable it is not noticeable when you write with it it's far enough up it, it doesn't doesn't bother me at all. On the uh, band, the band is the same width going all the way around, and then on the back side there, it just says cross. This is a light pen. I think total is so if you uh, post it, and it is thus. Postable, postable, and um, it is somewhat back weighted, but not too bad. And the band really doesn't bother my knuckles if I were to use it. It kind of gets down a little low enough for that. Yeah, you, you notice it there, but it's not too bad. Uh, total weight there is 20 grams, and just the body is 11 grams. The body is acrylic resin, and then you have, I'm going to assume this is brass, uh, it's chrome-plated brass on all the uh, appointments. The nib, it's a number five, and it is a medium. On the top part there, you have that uh, lion's head, and then you have an X, and on the one side of the X, it is 1846 when cross was established no doubt and then on the other side it says usa then uh, just on the lower side of that cross it has an m for medium that's the only nib size this uh, pen comes in is a medium and then on the bottom there it says cross the grip goes from the widest point, and this is where it flares. It flares slightly uh, as it meets the body. It is 11.5 millimeters, and it tapers down to just above this section here, the, but it's about 8.5 millimeters. So right in the middle is uh, 10 millimeters, which uh, for me is good. Now. Again, it's a it's chrome, so there it is somewhat slippery, but you do have this acrylic body, so that kind of gives you a little bit of traction. But you know, if that's a deal breaker, you know it it can be it can be slippery. So you want want to consider that. And again, it's a number five nib. This pen is uh, does take cartridges and converters but they are proprietary so this is the cartridge that came with this pin and I'm not sure I mean maybe it goes up there maybe cross makes some uh, bigger cartridges I'm not really sure but anyhow uh, that's that but they do make a converter and 
Okay, so this is a $20 pin and a converter for this is, uh, I want to say it's around 11, around $11. Uh, maybe a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher. So $10.50 to uh, $12.50 maybe, somewhere in that, in that price range. The, uh, so that, that, I, I, don't, I don't know, why, why make a pin and um, where your converter is going to be that much. It's proprietary, so if you're going to have a converter, you got to use it or refill the cartridge. Okay, it is a comfortable uh, pin in the hand, so uh, I, you know, I, I have enjoyed using it. Okay, so let's uh, do some size comparison, shall we? Alrighty, here we have the Cross. Uh, straighten that out. The Cross Adventure, Adventure Ra. And then we have the Schaefer 100, the Pilot Metro, and the Lamy Safari. All right. Here they are uncapped or unposted, whatever you prefer. They all have about the same size nibs on these. Uh, the Schaefer is kind of interesting. It, its width at the base is a number six, but definitely the, the length isn't the same size. Width is number six. The rest of these, probably the same thing for a Lamy, but anyway, there we got those. And here they are posted. How about a writing sample for the Cross Adventura? Little skip there, just uh, because it had been uncapped, so it probably dried out. Adventura. And again, this is a medium nib, and it's the only size that it comes in. The ink is, well, I guess you'd call it cross black. <laughs> All right, it is a it is a smooth nib, and uh, performs well. Got some wetness going on there. Reverse writing. Does well there. Starts bleeding off just a little bit as you as you get going, but uh, for those short times that you need it, just turn it over and still a little light. All right, um, as far as line variation, eke out a little bit there. You can get that ink flowing pretty good. Okay, reverse. Yeah, see, you can get it going there. But it doesn't hold off long in reverse. Uh, again, this is a, a good writer. Uh, downstrokes, upstrokes side strokes performs very well uh, again there's the the feed i don't think i showed you the feed before anyway uh, it it's a comfortable pin to hold in your hand so all in all my impressions of the cross then adventura i keep wanting to call it ventura but adventura is good it's a little bit lighter than what I would naturally prefer. It does feel uh, somewhat cheap, but uh, it's not too bad. So as far as um, pros and cons, I would say the con uh, would be that it feels a little cheap. Now we're talking, you're, you're going to pay about $20 for this pen and uh, for eight more dollars, you can get a Pilot Metro that feels more sturdy. 
I, it doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart. It just feels very light. But that's the way a Century 3776 felt in my hand as well. It just felt so light that it almost felt cheap. But um, the construction seems to be good. It's got a nice uh, soft clicking uh, closure. And then, um, yeah, so I, I like this pen. For $20, I, I think it's a, it's a nice pen. It doesn't, um, you know, it, it has some class to it, but it's not overwhelming. It would be a good uh, school pen or around the office that if, you know, it got legs and walked away, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But, uh, of course, $20 for a pen, I... I don't think I ever, <laughs> before I got into fountain pens, I don't think I ever would have paid $20 for a pen, but nevertheless. Um, so, yeah, there you go. I think it's a, I think it's a good pen. All right, thanks for watching.